Welcome, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Brother Hosanna David. I want to talk about our weaknesses versus God's mercy. Our weaknesses versus God's mercy. The recent video I did, I talked about the mercy of God. Let's read Luke chapter 15, 17, following Luke 15, 17. And when he came to his to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm not and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servant. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, Father, I've sinned against thee. I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. This story portrays God's mercy, his compassion for us, his children. We, who are God's children, we live in a world where there are so many vices, so many things that are capable of distracting us. Uh, it is now very difficult to walk uh, through a street, a busy street, or a street where you have humans to walk through a city without seeing things that can distract us. A lot of them, so many of them, so numerous, they are so flashy. And in this world, we are expected to please a father that is perfect. We are asked to live a holy and a perfect life. How possible is this? A lot of times, we are overcome by weaknesses, by our weaknesses. And we are not expected to live by the standard of our weaknesses, but by the standard of God. So what do we do? In the previous video I did, I said, we are not to live in sin, but if we make any mistake, if we fall, we are expected to rise up immediately, buckle up, and continue our Christian walk with God. We don't need to remain in our falling state. Romans 5, verse 20 and verse 21 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Now listen to this. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Let me read NIV version, which is simpler. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Why does grace increase? Grace increased because God's mercy cannot afford to let us go. Some people misunderstand this particular verse and they are of the opinion that since the grace of God increases for us, we have to live in sin. No, this is not what it is saying. Uh, the next verse, which is in chapter 6, says, shall, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin 
that grace may abound. It says, God forbid. How, verse 2, God forbid, how then, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So this is not an encouragement for sin. But what this Bible uh, verses, these two verses are saying, is that if a sinner goes deep into sin, the hand of God stretches longer to bring that sinner out of that sinful life. If a sinner kills, God's mercy stretches towards that sinner to bring the sinner out. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, let me give you an example. For instance, um, okay, this is a reshabitable light. Um, if this thing is stained with oil, uh, this one is, is, is reflected. Okay, this is a mobile phone. If it is stained with oil, just this little place is stained, you need little amount of soap and water to wash it, to rinse it. But assuming every part of it is stained and is dirty, what do you need? You don't need a little amount of soap and water to wash it. You need more, you, you need a considerable amount of water and soap, more soap to wash it. That is what he's saying. If a sinner goes one mile into the world, God's mercy goes ahead of that sinner. If that sinner goes a hundred miles, the mercy of God, why is God doing this? Because God does not want us to get lost. God reaches out to us wherever we are. So the mercy of God propels God, pushes God to reach out to us because God is compassionate. God's mercy endures forever. Lamentation chapter 3, 23 and 22 says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. That is true. If not for his mercy, we would have been consumed. Satan would have consumed us. Our sins, the repercussion of our sins, would have also consumed us. Because his compassion failed not. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassion failed, failed not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God's mercies are new every morning. So do not say that your sins are too much and that God cannot forgive you. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And it is what Satan uses in case of God's children. Some people will say, no, 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 I can't go back to God. I've done abominable things. I can't go back to him. Please go back to God. God is very much ready to forgive us. Romans 5, Romans 5 verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for us while we were yet without strength. He died for us. So, if when we were condemned, he died for us. He came to die for us. What about now that he has died? Jesus Christ has died. He has paid the price. It is just for us to accept the offer by acknowledging our sins and repenting of them and resolving in our hearts that even if we are weak, we will follow God. That is it. You don't actually need your human strength to follow God. What you need is your resolution to follow. Make use of God's mercy. But I want to ask a very simple question. Do you know that God's mercy will expire one day? It expires at death. God's mercy expires when an individual is dying then you cannot add to your work again. You can't make use of God's mercy again. Another place we'll meet with God's mercy is during judgment. 
That means for those who are merciful. The Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. How are you living your life? Are you making use of God's mercy or you are allowing your sins to drive you away? Hebrews chapter 4, 15 and 16 says, For we have for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find and, and find and find grace to help in time of need. Are you running away from God because of your sins or you are making use of God's mercy? I'm not talking about abusing God's mercy, abusing His grace. What I'm saying is that having known that God is merciful, do you return to God when you offend Him? We are not to offend God because He's merciful. We are not to offend Him mercifully because He's merciful. But if your weaknesses overtake your strength and your watchfulness, do you return to God? Are you still away, far away from Him because you have sinned? Please let us return to God. I say it every time that is that it is an insult upon the mercy and the grace of God for, for a human being to whom God is stretching his hand to say, come to me, I am waiting for you. It is an insult upon the grace of God and upon the mercies of God for someone like that to say, God cannot forgive me. God will forgive you. Do not allow guilt take you to hell. If we do not make use of God's mercy right now, then it becomes useless. Let us make use of God's mercy. God is merciful. Let us not get discouraged in our work with God. A lot of times we feel bad. Me, I feel bad too when I do bad. I feel bad when I offend God. But are we to continue to be eaten up? Should we allow ourselves to be eaten up by guilt? No, our guilt should drive us to repentance. That is what we call godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. Let us amend our ways. I don't know who I'm talking to. Come back to God. Do not dwell in the past. God deals with us on a daily basis. So long as you are alive, you still have the opportunity to amend your ways. Let me just say this before I round up. Jesus Christ is coming for a church that is blameless, that is without, without wrinkle. He is coming for the saints. Um, we are expected to make, our, to wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb. That is what we are expected to do. Now, how do we do that? Whenever we sin, we are expected to repent immediately and return to God. Let me read Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, and he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These robes, the robes, are the garments of righteousness that Christ gives to us when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior. But when the robes got stained by sin, by wrongdoing, by anger, we wash these robes in the blood of the Lamb. We 
make use of the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb is available to us. If you sin, I'm not talking about willfully sin. I'm not encouraging anybody to sin. But in case you sin, in case you sin, please make use of the blood of Jesus. Watch yourself clean in the blood of the Lamb. Do not say uh, you have sinned and that you will never watch yourself. Look at um, First John, First John, chapter two. My little children, these things write are unto thee that ye sin not. This is the same thing I'm telling you. Do not sin. And if any man sin, in case you sin, that is what I'm saying. In case you sin, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, the righteous, and is the propitiation of our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We are to repent immediately when we sin. A lot of sins will not make the rapture. Not because they are not sins, but because they have wrinkles in their garments, because they have stains in their garments at the point of Jesus' return. So what we need to do is repent immediately. That is what makes you a saint. You are not a saint because you do, you do not make mistakes at all. Let me repeat this. You are not a saint, not because you do not make mistakes at all. You are a saint because you are in Christ. You have repented of your past and you are in Christ and you are pursuing holiness on a daily basis. And whenever you commit any sin by mistake, you repent immediately. That is why you are a saint. Jesus Christ is coming for the saints. Be very, very watchful. Anytime you, anytime you sin, any moment, the moment you realize you are sin, please confess to God immediately. And he forgives you. That is it. And even when you do not realize you have sinned, anytime you pray, ask God for mercy, ask God to forgive you because a lot of times we sin and we do not even know that we sin. Please make use of God's mercy. If there are stains in your garment and the rapture happens, you will not be raptured. He is coming for those whose robes have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Please share this video with someone. Invite people to subscribe to this channel. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Hosanna David. And in case you want to get your way right with God and you need my support, I am very much ready. Freely I receive and freely I give. I want to also invite you to subscribe to Ego Eye Opener and Biblical Sexual Purity. God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, those of you who have been sharing my videos and those of you who have been supporting this ministry financially. Thank you. May the Lord continue to uplift you. God bless you. Do not forget to pray for me. I need prayers too, even as I pray for you. I pray for my subscribers. I pray for those who request for prayers. I read your comments and I respond. I pray for you. Please also pray for me. It is very, very important. It is not easy to talk about um, holiness, to talk about righteousness, to talk about making heaven. A lot of attention has been distracted. Please, I need your prayers. I receive a lot of attacks. I receive a lot of discouragement from the devil. Please, I need your prayers. Pray for me. Thank you and God bless you. In case you want to uh, know more, visit our website 
hosanatv.com and igulayopuna.com. Bye-bye.